Hey, good afternoon, guys. Ah, oh, that camera still looks a little crooked. Hang on a second. Ah, oh, it looks a little better. Hey, guys. It's KB5MIQ, big boy. We got a couple subjects we're going to talk about today. But for everybody's asked about ham radio cat, she's fine. She's feeling a lot better. She laid up on my coat in the sun in there, and I didn't want to wake her up and break her in here. But she's doing a lot better. Appreciate y'all checking on her. Wife's take good care of her. Guys, we got a couple of subjects today we're going to talk about. Uh, Chris and Melvin sent me a couple of ideas. And uh, first thing we're going to talk about is choosing, making sure that you're licensed to use the radios that you're trying to use and do not use a radio that's not authorized for your use. That may be the best way to put that. Let me read you what Chris sent me. He found, I'm not going to quote this guy's name because he don't need any attention brought to him. Uh, this mental midget put on a Facebook CB group, CB for sale, with what looks like a, some kind of amplifier and accessories. And I'm not talking about the amplifier at all. I mean, I y'all know they're not legal on CB, but they don't seem to enforce that, so we're not going to talk about the fact he got a CB and amp. What he says in his ad is what caught her eye. Anyone interested in this setup? We swapped to marine radios on our hunting club, and this is just in my way. All right. <laughs> marine radios. Well, here's old ham radio cat. Come here. Come here. Come here. Come here. Come here. Everybody needs to see you. Come here, girl. Everybody been asking about you. She's feeling better. Got a little bit of a wet eye, but she's feeling better. All right, guys. <sighs> Using CB without a license hasn't been enforced in 100 years, I guess. Or a lot of I say 100, but hadn't been enforced since CB boom after they dropped the license. Uh, the only radio that you can use unlicensed or CB and FRS, Family Radio Service. Those are two that I know of that you can use. I'm sure somebody's going to tell me there's something else you can use. Hang on. I forgot to start my background video here a little bit. Let me get it going. <laughs> yeah, as y'all know, this is, this is Redneck YouTube channel. I'm not a, I don't have good editing skills on this stuff. So, but anyway, but. If you try to use a channelized marine radio or say a channelized aircraft band radio, you got another government entities besides the FCC to worry about. For instance, marine radios, those frequencies are monitored by the Coast Guard, not counting the FCC. Those are Coast Guard monitored frequencies. They're specifically set aside for maritime use. All right, this kind of reminds me of an incident that happened several years ago. I read about some more mental midgets who happened to work for Boeing stole one of the big life rafts that goes in those airliners. And they inflated it and was using it to whitewater raft up on a river up somewhere in the United, northern United States. Well, in the middle of their whitewater rafting trip, here come a Coast Guard chopper landing right almost on top of them, flying over them, won't know what was going on. And they didn't realize that when they popped the inflator on that raft, it set off an automatic beacon and transponder. And they all lost their jobs with Boeing and got hefty fines from the Coast Guard, FCC, whoever. Same way with this. This guy's already put on social media that he is willing to use marine radios on his hunting camp. 
probably going to get a visit from somebody before it's over with. You know, I've, I've been talking about radios for preppers and transitioning from CB. And there's all kinds of reasons people don't want to use get a license. But in my in my view, those dog that dog don't hunt. If you're going to use a radio, be sure you're authorized to use it. Okay, that's the main thing. Make sure it's a legal way for you to use that radio legally on the bands you're authorized to use it on, or stay on CB or FRS, which doesn't require a license. I'm not sure about MERS. I've heard of MERS. I don't know much about it. Uh, but GMRS requires a license. But GMRS only requires you to get a license. No testing involved. I don't see why. I see why it's taking off now more. Uh, I'm not a fan of it at, at first because I got on a GMRS repeater and got chastised for not using the proper GMRS lingo on this man's repeater. I was testing a radio out for a friend of mine, seeing so how to set it up for. But this whole story also reminds me of something from my military days. This kind of goes back to using the proper, being authorized to use the right radio and the right bands. Uh, Air Force Civil Engineering was wanting to use NMAR sets, satellite phones. For us to use in the field. NMAR set stands for International Maritime Satellite Service. Hey, baby, it was set up so merchant marine ships could have a way that their people could call home on the phone if they needed to. That's what it was set up for. And it was also ruled by an international board. I never did understand why they let the military use it. The big thing I didn't like about it, you got a international sat phone, maritime sat phone that people are going to know what kind of phone you're on. That's really technically should be out in the ocean and you're using it in the middle of a desert. They're automatically going to know something's up. I freaking I didn't like to use it. Same way with these guys that are buying. This ain't the first instance I've read about people buying marine radios for their own use. And there's some people may get away with that for a long time. It's probably going to depend on how close they are to the coast or Coast Guard station. But bear in mind, you're not authorized to use a marine radio for your personal use on your hunting club, hunting lease, or whatever. That was set up for boaters to have a way to get a hold of the Coast Guard for emergencies or navigational issues or whatever. So. You getting the marine radios for use on your hunting camp and then putting it on social media is probably going to get you a good lesson down the road from somebody in the government. That's all I'm trying to prove with this channel is I want you on the radio. I want you on the air, but I just want you to do it legally. Melvin sent me another email talking about external speakers. And, this, and it was a good point on this because I've never used external speakers much until I got older. Uh, when I had two meter radios that had the speaker on the bottom, if I had them mounted under the dash of a pickup normally, and I was younger, I never had a problem hearing them. Uh, my first experience needing an external speaker, Kent gave me an 8,900 Yesu and it has a removable head on it. So I tried to mount the, the head, just have the remote head up there by me and driving and I put the unit itself under the back seat of my extended cab pickup. But when I folded the seat down, turned the radio on, I had it wide open volume and I was still having a hard time hearing it because of speaker being on the bottom and it's under the back seat now. So yeah, I hung a external speaker in the back of the truck. And if you got any kind of new modern truck today, especially an extended cab, all the modern safety straps for these car seats they want you to use. There's some kind of straps always in the back, and I just threaded the mount with the speaker through it and hung it right there over the seat. It worked good. The external speakers do help the sound of your radio. Because most of your radios are going to have a smaller speaker in them. Now, my 261 Kenwood sitting there on my bench, I used to use an external speaker on it because the speaker was on the bottom. 
and I just had the radio laying flat down on top of my bench. This 271 Kenwood, the speaker's in the front. And I could see where that radio would work real good mobile because I could hear it just fine because the speaker's in the front of the radio. This Ken, this other Kenwood, this 940 back here, when uh, Kent and I made the trade on it, he forgot to give me the external speaker. Well, I was over a while back. Here, I was supposed to go. He's supposed to have that. That goes to that radio, and I hooked it up. Man, it made that radio sound so much better. And external speakers don't have to be mega expensive. I know if you buy a matching Yesu, Kenwood, or ICOM external speaker for an HFR, you're going to shell out some money. And they do look good, and they might help to resell your radio down the road having the matching set up with it. This old 101 I've got here has got a uh, phone patch with it with the external speaker built in. I got it all together, and it makes the radio look good having it all matching. I'll be the first to admit that. You don't have to spend that kind of money on an external speaker. Uh, a static. MTC had some little old $12 ecstatic uh, external speakers, and I've got several of them, and I've used them. In, in fact, one of them's back in vehicle out there now. They sound good. They work good. Can't give me a Midland, and I used it in my truck. I don't believe, Hopefully, I didn't leave it in the truck when I sold it. I don't think I did, but I moved it into the house, and I can't find it. I've got to look for it. It's a really good external speaker. So, yeah, external speakers will enhance your radio experience, especially if you're older and getting deafer like I am. And uh, they do help a whole lot, especially with these new remote head radios. I've seen hams with four remote heads up here on some kind of pedestal mount in the front of their truck and all the radios under the seats. So, yeah, I'm going to say you're going to need some external speakers where you can hear it because I couldn't hear them under the seat. Yeah, external speakers do help, uh, help your audio, help your signal quality, help your sound quality, and also just help you to hear what's going on. Same with a headphone. I like using a boom mic headset when I'm on the radio. Anytime y'all caught me doing a video over here, I'm using it. I just unplug the speaker where y'all can pick it up. But I would rather have it on where I'm hearing it right here in my ear. I got used to that in the military. Chris, Melvin, thank you. I appreciate the, the input and the tips for this video. Guys, that's about all I got to cover today. There's a new uh, Skywarn class that McCurtain County is posting, along with their tech class. It's at two separate dates, but there'll be two separate slides at, after MRG Labs on here. Um, usual links, Circle 6 Ranch, Broken Circuit Ranch, Circle 6 Mail Drop, Broken Circuit Ranch, and a door planner are always in the uh, description of the video. The reason I keep a door planner in there is she's who I get my stickers from. She's also one of maybe this real cool little holographic with my older sticker on it, which I thought was neat as all get out. And any of you guys that are still interested in the uh, shack gadget, Broken Circuit Ranch has got them. Just send Ken an email there. MTC hadn't got their new website up yet as, as of yesterday. I hadn't checked today, so I don't know what they got going on, but they're fixing to launch a new website up there, so we'll look for big things from them. Right now, if nothing changes, I will be at Cowtown on Saturday the 17th, which happens to be my 67th birthday, and I will be at uh, Choctaw on the 31st at their first annual, hopefully annual tailgate sale. Guys, we're at 2117 on subscribers. I'm getting a lot of good views, a lot of good responses on my videos. I appreciate all your support. This is KB5 MIQ Big Boy, 73.